In today's video, we're going to write two types of dispute letters to deal with accounts that were deleted and then added back to your credit report. I'm also going to show you what you shouldn't do so that these reinserted accounts don't stay on for a full seven and a half years. Two days ago, we learned the two types of account reinsertions, how to delete the reinserted accounts, what's not a reinsertion, and how to proactively avoid this. If you haven't seen this video breakdown, you can find the video linked in the description as well as the video on the end screen. In the description, you can also find free resources for fixing your own credit, as well as the link to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me to see if I can get you better results than what you're getting on your own. Okay, so if you'd like to follow along with me, go ahead and pause the video here, grab your pen and paper, laptop, whatever you need to write your dispute letter and stay to the end of the video so you don't miss the breakdown of these two dispute letters as well as where to access them for free. Okay, so if you take a look at your screen, you'll see the dispute letter template that would be sent to the credit bureaus. However, you know I don't like templates, so we're gonna change this up a little bit and write our own. First, let's look at what the letter actually says as well as what the law says. Okay, so the first section is basically saying that once a negative item is deleted from your credit report, it cannot be put back on your credit report unless the creditor or collector certifies the information is complete and accurate. The second part says that if it's reinserted to your credit report, the credit bureaus are required to notify you in writing no more than five business days after they put it back on your credit report. However, they can also contact you by any other means that you've given them, such as email or online notifications, such as in your dashboard with Experian, you know, if you signed up for electronic notifications. So the rest of it basically says that they are required to notify you that it's been reinserted in the name of the furnisher who certified this information. Now, one of the most important things here is the word certify. What's the certification process? How did it occur? Who did it? What documentation was used? When was this investigation done? The first way to do this is to put the reinserted account on its own letter, all right? So this is what it would say. And this is really, really simple. I disputed Capital One 517805 on January 29th, 2020. When I pulled my new report today on March 3rd, 2020, I see that this deleted item was now put back on my credit report. You did not notify me within five business days that it was put back on my report and because of this section 611 violation this account needs to be removed our second way to dispute this would be to include it with our other disputed accounts take a look at uh, take a look at this letter it gives our required personal info as well as why we're disputing these accounts right why we're writing the letter you also see three different disputed accounts as well as their respective dispute reasons. So the same reason used in the first letter is included here for Capital One. Our other two accounts are American Express for a 623 violation, and that's uh, for failing to enter the required notice of dispute, and an unknown medical collection for a 623 violation for reporting an account without the creditor or collector name or address on an account that may be possibly, you know, inaccurate. All right, so as you can see, we have two important differences. Number one, uh, the first one focuses entirely on the reinsertion, and two, neither one includes the full law you see in the template, right? Okay, so here's the deal. Your job is not to be a law professor and you're not going to teach, you know, the computer, the EOSCAR system, whatever about the FCRA. Going through the whole included, you know, with entire law pursuant to this entire paragraph and this whole like five pages thing is useless and it just takes up paper. And keep in mind that the computer reading your letter has two jobs. Number one, read your letter. And number two, determine whether it's a template. So if it is, it's gonna come back as verified. So the key to doing this is simplicity and facts. That's it, okay? So now you know the two different ways to dispute reinserted accounts without templates, what you should not do for reinserted accounts, and now you can use the link in the description to access three versions of this letter for free, all right? So um, one of the best ways to track your dates and results and scores is to use an action plan and tracker. 
uh, both of which are coming soon as apps. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss it. Now, one thing I wanna add here is uh, what to do after or if this doesn't work. So if going after the violation does not work, you can go after their failure to do an actual investigation, and you would do that by taking the facts directly from the credit report, so it would be a factual dispute, by using the date last reported. All right, um, I might follow this video up with that one. I will think about that and I will plan that and see if it'll you know, be of benefit to you. Um, but generally speaking, the way to do this would be to use factual disputes if going after the violation does not work. All right, so I hope that this video was valuable to you. If it was, smash that like and let me know. And um, I hope you have a wonderful beginning of your week and that you stay, you stay safe. And um, if you need anything, put it in the comments. Let me know what you are struggling with and I see. I will see what I can do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.